This video is about comparing the accuracy of estimators using mean squared error, or MSE. So I have some code in R here, and we're going to alternate between looking at graphs of sampling distributions and thinking about that intuitively, and then numerically computing the corresponding MSE of each estimator to see if that matches our intuition. So first I'm gonna make the first graph from line 40 here. You can see over here in the plot pane, there's this uh, blue solid distribution or a PDF specifically for the first estimator, theta hat one, and then this dashed green line is the PDF or distribution of theta hat two. So they're both estimators of the same population parameter theta, which is this value here on the horizontal axis. So when we look at the sampling distribution of theta hat one first, uh, we can see it's not quite centered at the true value. It's a little bit above that, a little bit to the right. And in the code over here, that's what this B1 equals one is specifying, is that the bias of estimator one is equal to one. So instead of being centered at theta, uh, theta hat one's distribution is centered at theta plus one. So it has some positive bias or upward bias. Uh, theta hat two is also biased. It has an even bigger bias. You can see it's sort of centered at theta plus four. And in the code, that's what this B2 equals four uh, means over here. You can also think about how spread out are these sampling distributions. Um, in this case, we can see they're sort of spread out by the same amount, and that's what these SD1 is the standard deviation of estimator one equal to one. SD2 is the standard deviation of estimator two. It's also equal to one. So those are the same in this case. Um, and again, the way we can think of these sampling distributions more generally is when we sample a random data set from the population, that then leads us to compute a specific value of theta hat one. And so different random data sets generate different values of theta hat one. And so this is sort of looking at all those possible estimates and the, all the possible data sets. Uh, so you can see there's sort of a high probability of getting a value of theta hat one sort of between the true theta and say theta plus two. Uh, there's also some probability of getting a value that's around theta plus four, uh, but it's, it's pretty small. Um, and similarly, there's some probability of getting a theta minus two, but it, it gets very close to zero after that. Um, and similar interpretation for uh, the sampling distribution of theta hat two, there's a high probability it'll be in sort of this range between around theta plus two and theta plus six. A little bit of probability outside that, but going to zero pretty quickly after that. So in this case, if we think about, would we rather have theta hat one as our estimator or theta hat two? So we don't know which specific data set we're going to get ahead of time, and we don't know the true theta. So it's possible we could get a data set where theta hat one is way out here, and theta hat two is actually very close to theta, but that's a less likely occurrence given these sampling distributions. Uh, we can see it's much more likely that theta hat one will be somewhat close to theta and theta hat two will be farther away. So they're sort of spread out by the same amount, but the bias of theta hat two is much bigger 
So we'd prefer theta hat one in this case. We can see we're more likely to get a pretty good estimate from theta hat one than from theta hat two. Now to check whether MSE agrees with our intuition, we can look here at line 41 in the code. So the C is just telling it, uh, let's print out uh, multiple numbers. So MSE one, that's the mean squared error for estimator one. And if you remember from the textbook, uh, one way to compute that is to take the bias and square it. So that's this one squared and then add the variance, which is the same as the squared standard deviation. So here we take one squared plus one squared, that'll be two. Similarly, for the mean squared error for estimator two, first square the bias, so now we get four squared, or 16, and then add the variance, which is one. So altogether, that'll give us 17, which is much larger. So I'll run the R code and we'll see that down here in the console. Again, MSE1 is only two, whereas MSE2 is 17. So according to mean squared error, we should definitely prefer theta hat one. And that was indeed what we thought intuitively based on the graph. So now we'll move on to our second graph, which is very similar just that instead of having a positive four bias, now theta hat two has a negative four bias. But uh, the qualitative comparison remains the same. With theta hat one, we have a pretty high probability of being relatively close to the true theta, whereas theta hat two is more likely to be farther away. So we should prefer theta hat one. And as we'll see, we can compute the mean squared error again as the squared bias plus the variance. Uh, because the bias gets squared, according to MSE, it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. Four squared is the same as negative four squared. So we'll get the exact same MSE comparison here, two and 17. Um, and again, MSE agrees with our intuition that theta hat one is a much better estimator. Moving on to the next graph. Now we can see instead of having the same variance but different bias, now theta hat two has the same bias as theta hat one, but it's a lot more spread out. It has a bigger variance or a bigger standard deviation. Uh, specifically here we can see it's standard deviation is three times as big as theta hat one's standard deviation. And so intuitively, when we look at these sampling distributions, uh, we can see there is some probability that theta hat two will be close to the true theta. Um, but there's also a fair amount of probability that theta hat two will be very far away from the true theta. It could be at theta plus four or even larger, five or six units away, could be four units too low or even lower than that. Whereas for theta hat one, there's almost zero probability that will be more than say four units away from the true theta. So because of that intuitively, we would think theta hat one is probably a better estimator. In practice, that's what we would want because we'll when we use it in different data sets, we'll get more estimates that are in this range that are close to theta, and we'll never get these really uh, wild estimates out here. Now, when we compute the MSE numerically with the next line of code, uh, we'll see, uh, again, the theta hat one hasn't changed, still has the same MSE. Uh, the MSE of theta hat two is 10, which is larger than the MSE of theta hat one. And the reason for that is they have the same bias, but theta hat two has a larger variance or a larger standard deviation. 
instead of a variance of one, it has a variance of nine, uh, which causes its MSE to be much higher. So again, uh, MSE agrees with our intuition there, that they have the same bias. We prefer the estimator that's more concentrated or has a lower variance or lower standard deviation. We move on to the last graph here. This one is not as clear which estimator is better. So theta hat one is still the same. It has this uh, one unit positive bias and a standard deviation of one. You can see theta hat two, uh, again, is more spread out than theta hat one, but in this case, it has zero bias. So the mean of that sampling distribution is the true theta. So in this case, the bias of theta hat two is better, but the standard deviation is worse. So in this case, it'll depend what sort of loss function we're using, whether explicitly or implicitly, in terms of which estimator we would prefer. We think about which estimator is more likely to get very close to theta, that would be theta hat two, uh, because it has this probability in here, as well as over here. But theta hat two also has a larger probability over here of being farther away from the true theta. Um, and same on the, the right tail here, there's more probability of theta hat two being farther away. And so if we are very averse to uh, more wrong estimates, then we might have a loss function, such as the quadratic loss function that MSE uses, um, in which case the fact that it has a higher probability of being close isn't as important as this high probability of very wrong values, since we end up squaring those errors. And so when we compute the MSE numerically, the second estimator, we have a zero squared bias, uh, but the variance is four, since the standard deviation is two, two squared is four. And it turns out that is enough to make it have a larger MSE than theta hat one. Uh, so in this case, MSE says we should prefer theta hat one and that's not a crazy conclusion, but uh, we can see there is some room for debate if we maybe have a loss function that's very different than quadratic loss. So that is the end of these MSE examples. Hopefully that helps uh, give you some visual intuition as well as comparing that to these numerical MSE computations.